Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a linear Diophantine equation. We've done Diophantine equations before. I'll share the links down below. This is a linear Diophantine equation because all the variables are basically first power and uh, it has three variables and we only have one equation, but we're going to be looking for integer solutions. All right. So we have 3x plus 2y plus 5z equals 73. And we're going to be looking, like I said earlier, integer solutions, not necessarily positive integer solutions. Okay, so how do we go about this? Well, for this problem, we can easily use modular arithmetic. And I made some uh, couple of videos on modular arithmetic. I'll share the links as well. So now what does that look like? First of all, looking at the coefficients 3, 2, and 5, I think it would make sense if we used mod 2 and mod 3 here. So that's the plan. So what I'm going to do is, and what does that mean? Well, mod 2 means you're dividing everything by 2 and looking at the remainder. So it's kind of like the parity odd or even. And mod 3 means you're dividing everything by 3 and looking at the remainders. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, if this equation is true for a bunch of integers, then when you check the remainders, it's also going to be true, right? When you divide everything by 2, if it's odd, it's going to be odd again. All right, so let's see what this gives us. So first, I'm going to use mod 2. Mod 2 means everything will be reduced. For example, 3x, uh, 3 mod 2 is going to be 1, so it's just going to be x. And y is going to disappear. That's also the good thing about it. We're not going to have y because 2 is 0 mod 2. That's why it becomes 0. And 5 becomes 1. Because if you think about when I divide 5 by 2, what's the remainder? The remainder is 1. By the way, mod 2 is also called binary because it's kind of like, well, not necessarily binary, but there's only two kinds of remainders in terms of that, right? 0 or 1. Okay. So 5z is just going to be z. And 73, when you reduce it mod 2, this is going to be 1 because it's an odd number. So we can write it as a congruent statement. x plus z is congruent to 1 mod 2. Of course, we have to state the mod here. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It means that x plus, two leaves, x plus z leaves the remainder of 1 when divided by 2. So I can basically write it as x plus 2 is equal to x plus z, I keep saying, x plus z is equal to 1 plus 2k, where k is an integer. Okay? Great. So that's one of my equations. Obviously, I'm going to be using this later on. Let's go ahead and look at this equation from another angle, which is mod 3. The reason why I pick mod 2 and mod 3 is because of these coefficients. You might be wondering, why do I not use mod 5? You could. I mean, that's there's nothing wrong with that. So if I use mod 3, obviously x disappears and then I get 2y, right? 2y and then 5z becomes 2z. 2z or not 2z. Well, it's not b, right? I should have picked b there. Anyways, and uh, this 73 is going to be mod 3 because 72 is divisible by 3. That's going to be 1 mod 3, right? Well, I don't really like the 2s because it's kind of like two evens and now we're getting a 1. Well, 1 mod 3 is not necessarily odd, of course, but I'd like to get rid of the two, one of the 2s. So I can do the following. 2 is congruent to negative 1, so I can just write this as a negative y, which is kind of cool because having a coefficient of 1 is actually really nice, mod 3, by the way. Now, I'd like to, of course, write it as an e equality, not just congruence, so I can write it as 1 plus 3m because anything that leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by 3 can be written as 1 plus 3m, where m is an integer again, just like the other one, the k. Okay, of course, I'm going to be using this equation as well. So now let's see what happens. We have two equations for x uh, and y. Well, we have z as well. So let's, let's do the following. Let's isolate the x and y from these equations. So if I isolate x from the first equation, I get x equals 1 plus 2k minus z. And from the second equation, I get, I have to put the y on the other side, 2z minus 1 minus 3m. So these are my two variables uh, in terms of the other variables. Of course, we introduced new variables, but that's okay. We're going to get rid of them. Now, I have x and y in terms of z and m and k. So let's go ahead and plug all these into the original equation. What was my original problem? It was 3x plus 2y plus 5z is equal to 73. Wow, that would be for perfect if I use ABC because I would have 2b. Anyways, that's okay. So now I'm going to substitute. Okay, x replace with 1 plus 2k minus z. y replace with 2z minus 1 minus 3m. And of course, leave the z alone. Now notice that everything is in terms of k, z, and m. And k and m are, by the way, 
just parameters that we use to express these variables, but at the end, we're going to use them to express all of them, all the x, y, z. So now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit, and that's going to look like 3 plus 6k minus 3z plus 4z minus 2 minus 6m plus 5z is equal to 73. And then let's go ahead and add these up. So from here, I get 6k, right? And then minus 6m. And then z is going to give me, let's see what we get. Uh, this is 1z, and then plus 5z is going to be 6z, which is cool. That's really cool. And then I have the 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. If you subtract 1 from 73, you're going to get 72. That's nice. Notice that everything divides out nicely. It's not always going to happen, but here it happened, and everything looks good. Everything is awesome. Okay, now divide by 6, you get something nicer, smaller numbers. Okay, great. So now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, from here, I can basically what I, uh, isolate z, right? So I can write z as what? 12 minus k plus m. So this allows me to express z in terms of k and m. And notice that we had x and y in terms of z and m, z and z, m, and k before. So now how do you put these all together, right? Well, here's the thing. Now I got an expression for z. So what I'm going to do is note that we have z here and here. I'm going to replace those z's with this one. Make sense? Great. So let's go ahead and do that. I have x equals, I, I have x equals 1 plus 2k minus z. And let's go ahead and replace z with what it is here. Minus, let's write that in parentheses and then simplify that. Let's go ahead and simplify this expression. Let's see what happens. So if you simplify, you get 1 minus 12, that's a negative 1, uh, negative 11 I mean. 2k plus k is going to be 3k, right? That's going to give me 3k minus m because m is positive, but we're going to negate it. 1 minus 12 is going to be negative 11. Okay, so that's my x value, and I should frame that because that'll be important. Let's do the same thing for y. What is y? Well, y is equal to, if you remember, it is equal to 2z minus 1 minus 3m. And now I'm going to replace z with what it is, and z was this expression, remember here? 2 times the quantity 12 minus k plus m, and then minus 1 minus 3m. Let's simplify this. 24 minus 2k plus 2m minus 1 minus 3m. And from here, y becomes what? Let's see. I'm going to get 24 minus 1, which is equal to 23, and then minus 2k, 2m minus 3m is equal to negative m. So I'm going to be getting 23 minus 2k plus m for y. And what happens here is we got the x and we got the y and we already had the z in terms of everything. Let's put it all together. And I'm going to show you a couple, a couple examples what this means. Okay. So x, y, z as an ordered triple can basically be written as now 3k minus m minus 11 comma 23 minus 2k minus m comma 12 minus k plus m. That basically gives us all the solutions, but let's go ahead and look at some specific ones. For example, what if k and m are both zero? From here, we kind of get a simpler solution because uh, it's easy to substitute, right? k and m basically forget about them. And you're going to get negative 11, right? And then you're going to get 23 and 12. So you can satisfy, like you can go ahead and plug these into the original equation. You're going to notice that they satisfy the original one. And let's take a look at another case. K equals 1, M equals 0. It's going to give you another order triple X, Y, Z. And that's going to look like uh, negative 8, 21, and 11. And then finally, let's just do something different so that we can get a nicer solution. I'll tell you why it's nicer. If you do K equals 4 and M equals 0. And notice that I'm always trying to stick to 0. Sometimes you, you don't have to do it, but... I'm just going to show you something here. The reason why I pick a large k here is because I want to get rid of the negativity of the 11 here so that I can get a positive answer. That's the goal. And we get 1, 15, 8. And this is my, this is going to be my positive, positive solution. Okay? So this is going to be the positive case. And are there any other positive solutions? Check it out, find out, and just let me know. But this is the one that I found. So basically, our solution consists of this order triple where k and m are both integers. And basically, you can express the solution as 
like a parametric solution here, which means that you can run through all the values of k and m as long as they're integers, and you can get infinitely many solutions to this linear Diophantine equation. Well, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.